What's going on everybody? This is Sang Lucci here with another basic video tutorial. Today's video lesson is going to be on how we use SPY futures when trading stocks or trading options. I'm going to tell you how important this is when you're trading large cap stocks. When you're in large cap world, chances are at the end of the day, 90% of the stocks that you trade are going to trade with the market. And it's very important to have a read on whatever stock you're watching, but at the same time, it's almost even more important to have a read on the broad indexes. What are the broad indexes doing? What is the Dow doing? What is the NASDAQ doing? And all those different correlations. So this video is going to try to address uh, that topic. Okay, so first off, let me just introduce the main ETFs that I use uh, in order to track the spine. Now, I have a chart of the SPY up during my trading or in my platform at all times of the day and I have an intraday chart just so I can see what the hell is going on in the broad indexes now the SPY is a spider this is an ETF that was created to track the basically the performance of the S&P 500 so most people use this ETF uh, to watch the broad markets I like to use this one because I feel it's more representative of the whole market as opposed to the Dow um, some people watch the diamonds this is the DIA this is the ETF that tracks the Dow now this is only 30 stocks to me so I, I don't feel like it's representative of the whole market per se that's hence why I use this buy and then if you want to look at NASDAQ people use the Q's everybody uses the Q's you might see people throw around that word a lot um, this is QQQ, so this is the ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. So now that we got that out of the way, why do we use the SPY? Why is it so important? I mean, for personally, I believe if you're trading, if you're trading large cap stocks, you're trading completely blind if you don't have a SPY indicator. So either a level two up of the SPY or an intraday chart uh, similar to the one that you see right here. Um, especially during these, this environment when there's so much uncertainty out there. Uh, everything from what's going on over in Europe to this mess with MF Global. I mean, how many times have you seen in the last couple of months where the market has had violent moves in the SPY? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's say, a 10-day chart of what's going on in the, in the SPY. And all this stuff, a lot of this stuff happens overnight. Um, so here we closed up on the SPY at 128 and we open the day uh, almost 200 down points lower uh, uh, and then and then and then got washed out for, for two days and look at this giant move that's about four or five hundred down points in two days you know so the market is very very volatile right now and these moves these moves in the broad indexes you'll see they correlate to just about any large cap stock that you pull up so let's pull up Goldman Sachs and see what happened during November 8th to November 9th you see it dropped nine freaking points uh, let's pull up a tech stock let's pull up Apple Let's see what happened to Apple you see it dropped uh, this thing closed at 404 you see the damn thing dropped uh, to 395 the next day you know so so any stock usually that you pull up let's pull up Las Vegas Sands let's see what happened here November 8th to November 9th you see another two point drop and then the next day drops another three or four points so the the most stocks trade alongside the market now they're always doing random things as well but it's important to see the tide, to see the tide of the market, see if the tides are changing, and it's important to watch the daily price action to see if you can get trends, pick up on short-term trends, uh, pick up on anything in these, because chances are that move will correlate into your stock that you're watching, whether it be financials, uh, commodities, uh, tech stocks, internet shit, whatever the hell it is that you're trading. So a lot of times when I'm in a trade, I mean, if I see a violent move in the spies up or down, um, chances are, and it's going against the direction I am in the stock that I'm in. So, for example, if I see all of a sudden uh, uh, the spy make a giant move lower and I'm long a stock, I am going to be very, I'm going to be on the keys waiting to sell my position because chances are I probably got in at the wrong moment. I want to be able to time my move with the market. I want to be able to, I want to be able to be comfortable uh, in that trade knowing the market is going in my direction. So if I'm long, I either want the market to hold or push higher. If I'm short, I want to see the market continually making new lows 
um, in order to feel comfortable uh, holding my position. Many times I keep my losses to a minimum if I see uh, uh, the market going in another direction. And I just cut big and get the hell out of my long position before anything could possibly happen to me. And, and, and I'm just trying to basically anticipate the action that's going to go down in my stock. I don't care. I'll take, I'll take these small losers over and over and over again until I can find the right time uh, to be in my position. That's what it's all about. You want to time these moves alongside the broad indexes, alongside sector rotation and things like that. You want to make sure things are on your side and things are comfortable. You want those easy trades. You don't want complicated trades. Okay, so another thing I want to mention is what do you want to look for? Sometimes I look for stocks that stick out and trade in the opposite direction. So it's like the stock is telling you there's a huge buyer or seller in that stock that day because it's able to move against the market. So, I mean, let's just pull up a random example of Apple today. Apple was extremely weak all day versus the other stocks uh, in the tech sector. If you take a look at Goog, this stock was up today. If you take a look at Amazon, this stock was up today. Uh, if you take a look at Priceline, this stock was uh, was up a little bit and then tanked uh, uh, towards the end of the day. But you get the picture. Let's look at this buy deal. This stock was up and kind of held up most of the day. Um, Apple was was surprisingly very weak today in a market where most of the techs were rallying or were positive on the day. These are the kind of things I want to notice. These are the kind of things I want to make note of so that in the future, if I see that same correlation, so for example, if we pull up a, a chart of the SPY, if this if the SPY is heading higher and my Apple is just, it just can't catch a bid, I want to be short this stock. I, I'm, 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 I have a short bias on that stock and I'm waiting for a big blowout. So for example, I might say to myself, okay, let's go out to three months. He broke down here. He might actually get down to 370. He might get down to 360. So that might mean I might have a 10 point move down in one day and that could be a good opportunity to short that stock. So I kind of use how stocks trade uh, uh, in correlation to the market to make ideas for new trades. Okay, and here's another example of a stock that was extremely bullish today on a day where the market was pretty much stagnant and a little bit lower. So the market here was down a percent. This stock here was up three and a half. This is Las Vegas Sands. It was unusually bullish today. So a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll take a stock like this, which is acting completely against the market, and try to wait for the, the spies to bottom out and start pushing back higher and then maybe pick up a position um, for a second leg or a third leg uh, long in a stock like this because it was strong on the way down and it was just it was strong all the way down and you could really see the buyers holding the holding the stock up so finally if you get the market to move around or to or to uh, a, a sort of reverse and head back higher these are the stocks that I want to be long in versus anything else because I saw the bullishness right off the open I want to get long these names um, as opposed to other names because because you can see the strength against the tide of the market so these are kind of uh, other examples where I will use the spy to give me trade ideas or to um, use them in correlation just to figure out what the sentiment is in whatever sector that it is I'm, I'm watching. So again, folks, very, very important to watch uh, uh, the SPY on a daily basis and on an intraday basis just to get um, what's going on in the market and just to make sure you're on the right side. You want to make sure you're on the right side. You don't want to be long when all of a sudden you have a giant, you know, 500 point down day and, and the market is tanking. Now, for you swing traders out there, yes, you know, if you want to hold on to a position, um, you know, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I don't even want to hold on to those things because, again, I like to be, I like to time it correctly and I like to time it when I'm alongside uh, uh, the tide of the market. So, so again, in your trading platforms, um, I have several charts up. I mean, I, what I have is I have a, actually, I'll just show you right now. I usually have a six month chart of whatever stock it is and my, all my stuff is linked. So as soon as I type in a ticker, uh, it'll filter out through the other 
uh, gadgets and gadgets that I have on the platform. So I'll have a six month chart up, I'll have a 10 day chart up, um, and then I'll also have an intraday chart up of whatever stock that I'm looking at. And, and then on top of this, I'll have my I'll have my spy chart up, which I'm which is always there, and I'm always trying to see uh, what the hell is going on in the market. Because if I can pick a trend on the market for the day, and I'm right on the trend on the the, the spy for the day, then chances are I can get a big move in one of the names I'm watching, like Apple, Goldman Sachs, uh, Bank of America, or whatever the hell it is that I'm watching, Potash. Um, any of this stuff and the key is to find the right sector now we're gonna go through that in another video but the juice flows to different sectors and I'll give you just a, a, a sort of a synopsis on that video that we're gonna put out but anytime you know the market has a big day 200 point up day or a 200 point down day um, you're going to have a certain sectors that are basically the breadwinners that are the ones that rally the most uh, out of the whole pack and we're trying to find those. So it might be, you know, it might be the techs one day. Um, you know, it might be, it might be, it might be casinos one day. Um, you know, like it was today. It might be internet stocks. It might be Chinese stocks. It might be the Baidu one day. Um, you know, and and our goal is to kind of go through these sectors, find where the juice is, and make sure we're in the right horse for that day. Uh, but that's going to be a video for a later time. Stay tuned, and guys, make sure if you're going to day trade uh, uh, options or even equities on large cap stocks, always make sure you have a chart of one of the broad indexes up, an intraday chart, and you're watching that chart as closely as you are to whatever the hell stock it is that you're watching. Thanks, guys, for listening. Comments, comments, and send me emails.